lovelies and welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is melissa otzi and if you're new on this channel what are you waiting for Hey, eh? what are you waiting for come on hit the subscribe button and click the bell beside it so you get notified whenever i post new content on this channel like, like that way you don't get to miss any content at all you guys i want to apologize again for my voice i'm still very much down with flu you get vaccinated and you still contract flu like i don't even understand it anyway we move the show must go on anyway you guys in my last video i mentioned that the uk government has added carers um healthcare assistants and social care workers to their occupational list and it, i got loads and loads of questions so today i'm going to make a comprehensive video answering your questions well i got some questions like how do i go about it i don't even have a bsc so i'm like said oh i have a bsc in social sciences i, I don't even have a bsc in any health related cause blah 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 how do i go about it do i need to study anything special in school well i want to stay that for social care you need to study social care in the uni for you to be able to apply. I mean that at BSc level or at master's level because it's more like a professional job. They look after, um, they offer protection to individuals at risk both adults both children when a child is being is being abused it's is social care services that will step in you know things like that so you really need to go to school for that but for being a carer and being a healthcare assistant you absolutely do not need to have a bsc to be able to become a healthcare assistant or a carer i want to state that the uk government has not officially announced the requirements and i do not think they will do that because it is left for the um care homes and nhs hospitals and the agencies to you know list the requirements that they need from overseas applicants if that makes sense going through the current jobs that are offering tier two sponsorship for carers and healthcare assistants i have been able to compile the requirements that most of them require from overseas applicants and i think that should do but i also want to say that being a carer is a very very demanding job it's not something you just jump into it's not a profession you want to do uh because you want to leave your country or because you need the money you you're going to get frustrated on the job it requires compassion you need to be very compassionate about the job yes it's rewarding but it's something you need to enjoy doing because it's more like a nursing assistant role. so you'll be seeing a lot of things you'll be doing a lot of things so it's something you need you, ha you need to have uh, passion for for you to be able to fit well into the role because most of these hospitals they offer three years visa so imagine doing something you don't love for three years it's going to be very frustrating i just thought to mention this to you guys so you have a rough idea and not just think about the money think about the sponsorship available and jump into the ship and then end up getting very frustrated in the end if that makes sense now being a carer has different sub professions it includes being a healthcare assistant being a support care worker being a domiciliary care worker domiciliary care worker basically they work in the community right they go from homes to homes to look after uh, people for instance you might have to visit like 10 homes in a day like you go to a home one you look after the individual you do what you have to do you clock out, you go to another home, like you just be in the community, basically. And of course, being a living carer is the last one. Basically, being a living carer requires you to live with the patient in his or her own home, private homes. So basically, you stay there. It could be one week in, one week out. Like you stay with the patient for one week. One The next week, you go home or you do two weeks in, two weeks out, depending on how you want it. But basically, you look after the patient, making sure the patient takes his or medication, look after the patient. Now, what are the duties of a carer? Basically, in general, what you have to do is to bait the patient, which includes changing the patient's path. You follow the patient's care plan. By care plan, I mean routine. So you get to know what the patient needs at each time. You feed the patient. So it requires hoisting. So you have to hoist the patient from point A to point B. The ones that are using wheelchair, you have to pull them, put them on the wheelchair. Basically, making sure that the residents are well supported according to their care plan if that makes sense so this is like a rough idea of what you would be doing although if you choose to work as a support worker it's a little bit different because uh support workers that work in supported living environment those ones they don't really get to do much of personal care basically what you do is that you take the uh, patient to the community 
they are most of them are actually very all right they don't need um much support they just need you to be there to be able to boost their independence so they can be able to do things on their own like choose the right outfit for the day be able to bait themselves be able to you know feed themselves be able to cook they just need you to support them with that not like you know you have to do it for them just encourage them to do it themselves encourage them to assess the community encourage them to go out you know to live a normal life like every other people so that one is actually like the easiest and it's called support worker working in supported living environment so if that's what you want then quote this word when you're looking for a job keep keep putting in this particular job bro and you will get um job adverts related to this if you feel like oh you cannot work as a healthcare assistant good now what are the requirements basically in the uk they require you to have either a diploma in health and social care you're required to have a gcs gs is more like a general certificate of secondary ed education or it's equivalent it's equivalent is the one we call WIEC, west african examination council or ssc the senior secondary school certificate examination and you need to have at least a C in English and maths. In most of the requirements I saw online, all they keep asking is your ability to prove that you're a literate, like you're good in literacy and numeracy. That's just basically what they want you to prove. And you should be willing to work towards having a care certificate or LVQ while on the job. So, and I just want to make this very clear in case it's a bit confusing to you. Now, what you're required to have is at least your a proof that you're illiterate, that you can communicate. Even though you're still going to be interviewed, so you will still prove yourself while being interviewed. But you know how this thing goes. Your CV needs to appear very, very solid so you can be chosen because you're not the only one applying for the job. So what you need to do is that organize your CV, put in all the experiences that you've had. Even if it's not related to care assistant, put it in, put it there. As long as you can narrow it to caring for people. And I also want you to know that you don't, it doesn't really need to be a paid job. In your CV, you can state that if you've taken care of someone with diabetes before, if you've taken care of someone that is disabled, if you've taken care of someone with autism, as long as you've looked after somebody, it doesn't really need, need to be your family member. You know, just put it in your CV the way it is. Trust me. If you've looked after a, a family that has, um, let's say you've looked after someone, someone's child with autism or schizophrenia or psychosis or even um, someone's mother, you know, you can put it in your CV because the most important thing is that they want to know if you've actually had the feel of the job at all. Though some do write that no experience is required, but you know how these things are. If you're in your CV is very empty and someone else's CV is filled, trust me, they're going to go for that person if that makes sense. So whatever that you've done at all that has to do with care, that someone's looking after someone, care. Put it in your CV, if that makes sense. So it doesn't really need much. You don't need to have a degree or like a BSc or a master's or anything like that. Some of the job adverts, some even state that it could be paid or voluntary. You know what I mean? So you can even state that all your all this while you've been working voluntarily. That's if you are, you just have to be very honest. I'm not saying you should come and lie about what you've not done before. And no, if you've, if you've looked at most times in Nigeria, it's very common. We look after our age um, parents, our age grannies. We look after people. Myself, when I was in Nigeria, I looked after my grandmother. So it's, it's, it's an experience because it's similar to what you will be doing here. If the only difference is that you will now be in an official setting and you will be paid. If you are still very confused about this CV thing and this requirement thing, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will try my best to make it very clear to you. Now, I've talked about what being a carer is, the requirements. Now, I know the next thing on your mind is, how do I apply, Melissa? What do I do? How After organizing my CV, where, how, where will I find these job bros? Good. Now, if you can even go on Google, if you go on Google and type, um, if you're interested in healthcare assistant, you can type healthcare assistant jobs, 
with tier two sponsorship you will see a lot anyway some of the job sites in the uk includes www.indeed.com www.totaljobs.com we have aduna we have don't worry i'm just going to leave the job sites in my description but there's no point you know mentioning mentioning them here because you might struggle to get a hang of it so i'm just going to leave the link in my description box so all you need to do is that when you go to my description box is down below you can click on one of the sites let's say you go to indeed.com you can click on indeed you would see a search box where they will ask you what like the job you're looking for whether it's health you click on health and then you can now type in whether it's care assistant you want to do or support worker you just type it there some will ask you the city that you want so you can anything that comes to your mind you can just write it there because if you are abroad you might not really know like uh, the city you want to stay or something like that then you can just type it for instance you can type manchester and then you see different jobs related to what you're looking for more make sure you look out for the one that has tier two sponsorship because that is the one that will be offering you a certificate of sponsorship for you to be able to move from wherever you are to the uk and i also want to tell you that applying for a job can be very very frustrating it can even when you're in the UK, sometimes you have to keep applying and applying and applying. Talking about someone that is from overseas. So you don't have to give up. You have to be ready to apply, keep applying and keep applying and keep applying. You can send off as much as 500 applications, 1,000 applications, 1,500 applications for you to get picked. You might be lucky and the first one you just send off, bam, you get an invita uh, interview invitation. That's why I'm giving you heads up so you can prepare your mind ahead. But trust me, it's beautiful. It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. I actually prefer this route to the normal tier 4 route because trust me, most of students in the UK, they are working as healthcare assistants to be able to pay their school fees. So, you know, uh, it's, it's beautiful when you just come in straight from wherever you are to... um the country and you're just working as a care assistant without having to go to school to pay school fee because it's so expensive these school fees a lot of people come here and work as care assistants and also school but you, you're just coming here to work and trust me like i mentioned in the last video the minimum payment is about twenty thousand pounds gross in a year which is okay if you get what i mean we've talked a lot and now let's go down straight to business the money 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 <laughs> because it's not all this english i'm blowing it's not one era you have no money has to be involved migrating from one country to another is not is a big deal it's so it's, it's expensive to cost you a lot like i mentioned in my last video if you're applying for up to three years you have to pay 232 pounds for per person for the three years so you have to pay 232 pounds for yourself for your wife depending on the number of kids that you have and then if you are applying for more than three years you have to pay 462 pounds per person if that makes sense for the four years for the more than three years but per person now visa 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 in most cases some of them do offer full sponsorship so what they say is that is that they are going to look after you for the first month that you would be in the uk that's where you should ask them doing your interview when you get the job and they tell you no they don't offer full sponsorship you can keep insisting trust me with these people you don't fold your hands you can keep insisting that that is what you want you want full sponsorship that's what you're looking for can shake them a bit and they will say okay yeah and offer you full sponsorship for you to probably repay them later or don't have to repay if they're not offering full sponsorship you need to prove that you have ties which are your kids and secondly you have to prove that you have enough personal savings to be able to sustain you in the uk for one month and i think that's about 1270 pounds minimum in your account state to be able to prove that okay for this one month i'll be able to support myself and support my family so you see why it's very important for you to look for the job that states that they offer full sponsorship if that makes sense if you feel like you don't understand anything or you're still missing out please just 
and ask your question and i will be answer and i will be more than happy to answer so thank you so much you guys for watching i'm more than happy to help i'm here to help anybody that is still very much confused on how to go about it. in my next video i'm going to talk about being a carer in the uk what it's like what they don't tell you about so look out for that video can you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you get notified and please smash the like button smash it so that youtube can recommend this video to others who may be seeking this information thank you so much guys for your support till i see you all in my next one i love you guys bye